see so many of you here today. You, we recognize that this is a very special time. It is a remembrance for many people when they think about the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King on April the 4th. But the King Center is in honor of his legacy and the work that we continue to do, and that many of you, our partners and friends, continue to do. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is good to be here, and I'm thankful uh, to the members of the King family, uh, Dr. Bernice King, and all the guests here. Thank you for allowing me to share in this solemn moment of remembrance. 54 years ago today, an assassin fired onto a Memphis motel balcony and changed the course of American history. Some would say, he changed world history that exact moment. Uh, two months before his death, Dr. King, uh, and, and, and who could ask for that exact same epitaph, nobody comes to mind immediately. Uh, the calling on Dr. King's life was so strong, he seemed to know that he would have to pay the ultimate price. And yet, he pushed on even knowing that fact. That's how important this notion of equal rights for all Americans was to him. A few years before he died, Dr. King tried to call America's attention to the fierce urgency of now. And yet, it took a social justice movement coming during the global pandemic for many Americans to acknowledge that we are indeed a nation divided. State of the city address I've only been mayor 90, like 91 days, but I still had to deliver the State of the City Address. Uh, this is a speech that every mayor gives every single year for this great city. And the audience included business people, city council members, and others, and as well as Atlanta residents. And but I was able to outline my plan for the coming year, plans to address public safety, plans to address affordable housing, city services, and opportunities for the city's young people, like the ones we heard today from West Atlanta Charter School. I unveiled a program that we believe will help close the gap that still separates many of our children of color from their white counterparts. It's a gap that if we do not take measures to correct now, could potentially plague them for the rest of their lives. Dr. King saw this coming too. At the March on Washington, when he told the world of his dream he said in his dream, as mayor, I intend to make sure that young people here in the city from Bankhead to Buckhead, as we say, and all parts in between, have the same opportunities to thrive, the same opportunities to live their American dream. Dr. King reminded us that we cannot walk alone. That's why I live by the principles of drawing circles instead of drawing lines. And I learned that right here in our Nonviolence 365 training, how to draw circles and not draw lines that divide us. We cannot honor Dr. King's legacy unless we honor each other's humanity and share responsibility for one another. 54 years later, we are here today because a gunman was able to stop a messenger, but he could not stop the message. Amen. And we should still continue to this day, this very moment. So I thank you all for being here, and I want to say God bless the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. God bless you. Amen. With a greater readiness, let us stand with a greater determination. Let us move on. In these powerful days, these days of challenge, to make America what it ought to be, we have an opportunity to make America a better nation. And I want to thank God once more for allowing me to be here with you. Several years ago, I was in New York City autographing the first book that I had written. Come on, sir. While sitting there autographing books, a young black Dominican woman came up, and the only question I heard from her was, are you Martin Luther King? I was looking down writing and I said, yes. The next minute, 
felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. I was rushed to Harlem Hospital. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. The blade, that blade, the x-rays revealed that the tip of the blade was laying on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. Once that's punctured, you drown in your own blood. That's the end of it. Came out in the New York Times the next morning. If I had merely sneezed, I would have died. All right, sir. Well, about four days later, they allowed me, after the operation, after my chest had been opened and the blade had been taken out, move around in the wheelchair in the hospital. They allowed me to read some of the mail that came in, fine letters from across the world, and the state sign letters came in. Those were the last words spoken out of my father's mouth on April 3rd, 1968, at the Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee. Let me also, in his absence, thank the mayor for joining us uh, on today. This has been a very busy day for him, of course. We appreciate him taking time out of his schedule uh, to share remarks. Uh, before I uh, say just some brief words, I want to take uh, this time because it's always important uh, for history, uh, for us to know who we have with us on today. Uh, I'm Grace King, CEO of the King Center, the youngest of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mrs. Fred Scott King. King Center is the official living memorial to the life, work, and legacy uh, of my father. And uh, we have with us today members of the King family. And I want to start first with uh, my father's only living biological immediate family member, his sister, Dr. Christine King Ferris, is here on the front row. 94 years of age, and we are deeply appreciative of the longevity that God has given her for her to be here with us. Also, her son, Isaac Ferris, Isaac Newton Ferris Jr., and her daughter, Dr. Angela Ferris Watkins, Angela's daughter, Ferris Watkins. And then, behind us, you may not be able to see her, but you will see her when we get ready to lay the reef, is my father's brother's widow, Naomi B. King. Uh, she is with us, I think she just turned 90, I believe, on last year, will be 91 this year. So, we got a little longevity in our genes. Um, with her is her son, Derek Barbara King Sr. His son, Derek Barbara King, yeah, no, okay, no, he's not. And then Naomi's oldest daughter, Alveda King, Alveda's oldest daughter, Celeste McFadden. The carpool was the major source of transportation for all of those who decided. Can I get an amen? 